Alexander, and I'm thrilled to be the Religious Education Assistant at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City. Thank you for joining me for this week's edition of the UU of the Week. Today, we are going to learn about Helen Beatrix Potter. She was most famous as a children's author, but she was also a scientist, a land conservationist, an artist, and a Unitarian. Her family were English Unitarians, the dissenting Protestants who rejected the Trinity and ruffled a lot of feathers in Europe. We remember that English Unitarians like Joseph Priestley got chased out of Europe and then settled in America, eventually starting the Unitarian Church we are more familiar with today. But Beatrix had this to say about her faith. All outward forms of religion are almost useless and are the causes of endless strife. Believe there is a great power silently working all things for good. Behave yourself and never mind the rest. You know, that sounds like a really familiar credo to me. Beatrix was born in England in the year 1866. Like most women at the time, this curious Unitarian was not allowed to attend formal education. So she was educated by her governess, which is like a nanny. She loved studying nature the very most, and she spent much of her time painting flora and fauna, or plants and animals. Beatrix and her brother Bertrand kept several pets like rabbits, rats, a hedgehog, bats, and also butterflies and other insects. She studied their shapes and habits extensively, even using a microscope to study the insects and enhance her drawings. Beatrix became very interested in mushrooms and kept a collection of painting and notes about her observation. And according to UU World, Beatrix actually hypothesized that mushrooms reproduced by releasing spores in 1897, she wrote a paper and submitted her new idea to the Royal Botanical Society, but they were so annoyed that she was not only an amateur scientist, but also a woman. So they ignored her and they dismissed her paper. It wasn't until 1967 when her paper and her beautiful drawings were rediscovered that Beatrix was finally given the credit for being right and making a new scientific discovery. Beatrix Potter wrote many letters to her former governess's children. One such letter was a story about Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter, which included several beautiful illustrations. Beatrix was encouraged to publish her studies and illustrations, and the rest is history. Her years of carefully observing the animals in their natural habitats paid off, giving her charming stories even more depth and making her beautiful illustrations all the more detailed. Beatrix Potter published 30 popular books and she used the money from the book sales to buy parcels of land that were adjacent to her farm. By the end of her life, she owned more than 4,000 acres of English countryside. Beatrix died of pneumonia in 1943, but the land that she preserved became a national park. Potter's biography, Linda Lear said, Potter brought back nature into the English imagination when the plunder of nature was more popular than its preservation. Beatrix Potter left a legacy of rich storytelling, beautiful art, land preservation, and scientific discovery. And we are thrilled to add her to our growing collection of UUs of the week. Go to uuoftheweek.org to learn more about fascinating Unitarian Universalists. And thanks for joining me.